We're going to go over the 2018 Riverdale Blackhawks tryout and setup. This is going to outline what the field should look like, how the activities should transition, and what's expected of the coach during the tryout. You're going to start by setting up two fields in the setup of a 25 by 20 grid. Inside one of your fields, you'll set up a 15 by 15. Make sure your goals are set up so you don't need to put them out later. For your first activity, only if you were dealing with U12, U13, U14, and U15 players, you'll be doing the dribbling evaluation. In the dribbling evaluation, you'll be evaluating each individual player on a score from a 1 to a 10. A 1 being the lowest rank, a 10 being the highest. You're looking for any players that stand out, good or bad. You want to make a decision as quick as you possibly can because you have limited time, roughly 10 minutes to do so. The first evaluation activity of this tryout is a dribbling activity. You're going to start by evaluating them on their right foot, then their left foot, and then you will ask them to change directions. It is important that you find their tryout number, which will be located either on their shorts or on their arm, and you make sure that you give them a fair and appropriate rank. After you're able to do the right foot and left foot portion of the dribbling evaluation, have one of the coaches demonstrate three different turns to give the kids a better understanding of what you are looking for. Be sure to show these changes of directions within 30 seconds so you can quickly get right back into the activity and get your evaluation rank for the players. Your evaluation sheet will look similar to this one. You are going to mark your score for each individual player in the yellow box. The evaluation scoring is going to be based from a 1 to a 10 rank. In this portion of the evaluation, it is okay to have duplicate numbers. Be sure to evaluate the players on all three portions of the dribbling activity. Their left foot, their right foot, and their ability to change direction. You have 10 to 15 minutes to get this done. Be sure that both evaluators are creating their own individual scores for every single player in the tryout. Don't forget that this portion of the tryout is for U12, U13, U14, and U15 only. Here are some helpful hints to making this easier for you. Be sure to spot out the best player immediately and the worst player immediately. That's going to help gauge where these players are and will make your life a thousand times easier in terms of giving every player their own individual rank. After you've done all three dribbling activities, you can end with a fun game called Knockout. Each participant is going to have their own soccer ball, and they're going to be trying to knock out their opponent's soccer ball on the outside of the square. If they get knocked out, the player is eliminated from the game and must wait until the very next game begins. As the game continues and players' soccer balls are getting knocked out of the square, it's very important that you make the field smaller to allow a condensed playing environment where players have more of an opportunity to knock each other's soccer balls out. Please be sure to put a cone in the very middle of your field. That way you can have four little quadrants. By having these four quadrants, you'll be able to actually move the players into one of those little squares to make life a lot easier. You see here that they're moving into a little square. I didn't put a cone down, but if you can put one right in the middle of the field, this will allow for a smooth transition into the final part of the activity. Once the players end the game, if there's enough time, you can play two or three rounds before transitioning into the 1v1 activity. This portion of the tryout is standard for every single team. We are now moving into the 1v1 portion of the tryout. You will be having players line up behind the goals as such in the image on the bottom right of this screen. You'll be using the 25 by 20 grid and make sure there is a goal on each end before the activity starts. All of the soccer balls should be on one side inside the goal, allowing players to stay organized and have many balls ready to go at their disposal. Each side of players is going to get five minutes straight of offense and five minutes straight of defense. This way, you allow yourself maximum visibility to see which players can do what on offense and which players can do what on defense. Each player is going to get their own individual score from a one through a five. 
a 1 being a weak player, a 5 being a very strong player. You are looking to see which players are creative, which players are technical, which players are not afraid to take risks, and which players can actually defend and win the ball back from the offensive player. A description of the rules is very important to explain to the kids, letting them know that when they're on offense, they're trying to score in one goal, and if you're on defense, you're trying to steal the ball to score in the other. Attacking players must stay on one side, defending players must stay on the other. They will switch after five minutes. Each player will get five minutes on offense and five minutes on defense. Be sure to make sure that everyone gets their equal opportunity. Also, when it comes to standing and doing your evaluation, I recommend being in the very middle of the field or picking out one of the corners and standing there. This video was recorded in a session of mine, making it so you guys would be able to see what it's like to have a mock tryout. Like I said, every five minutes, the players will rotate. Offense goes to defense, defense goes to offense for five minutes. Coaches will switch after 10 minutes. If you look at this player, this player shows confidence with a nice shoulder feint and then beats the player. This would result in a quality scoring number, allowing coaches to know that this player can play. Try and be fair and rate them after you see them two or three times. Don't just give them one set ranking after one repetition. It's important that we do give these kids a fair opportunity to showcase their talent. When looking at this player, you can see that they lost control and lost possession of the ball. This shows that they do have confidence to take a player on, but they don't have the technical ability to maintain that possession. If the player consistently played like that, I would give them a 2 or a 3. In the 1v1 evaluation portion of the tryout, you are going to be giving the player two scores, an attacking and a defending score. Both of these will be done off of a 1 through 5 rating. One being the weakest, five being the highest quality player in the group. Be sure to give every player their own ranking. If you feel that you did not get a good look at one of your players, you are able to manipulate and move them in the line so you can see them again more frequently. Depending on the age group, you will not be aware until the day of of how many players will be participating. So we want to prepare by having two fields no matter what. By setting up two fields, you allow maximum repetitions to spread out the players evenly to allow them the attacking and both defending opportunities to be ranked. When we are looking at these fields, be sure to have one coach on each field. It's important that you focus on the players and you pay attention to safety and any hazardous concerns that may pop up. After you have evaluated one field for 10 minutes, it is so important that you and the other evaluator switch fields so you can see the other players that have not been evaluated on your sheet. Be sure to get a ranking for every single participant on both fields. After 10 minutes, you will be making the switch, so be sure to have rankings for both players on both fields by the end of this 1v1 activity. If you are unable to get a score for the attacking or defending aspect of the session, I highly recommend you find the players you overlooked and have them go again so you can get an appropriate score for that individual player during their tryout. After 20 minutes of the 1v1 portion of the tryout, you will then switch to the 4v4 aspect of our tryout. This will be the last step in evaluating our players. This is the most crucial portion of the tryout and there can be no room for error when evaluating players in the 4v4. You are going to set up the fields and for the first 10 minutes, you are going to try to organize which are the stronger players and which are the weaker players. You will do that by having an A field and a B field. You and the other evaluator will be communicating with each other every few minutes, switching the players so that you have weaker players on one field and more higher quality players on the other. Balance these two out. Once you immediately establish which field is going to be your A field, which is going to have the top players, and which field is your B field, which will have the lower quality players. The information and data you put on your tryout evaluation form should not be shared with anybody other than myself or the club administrators. You will know who they are because they will introduce themselves at that tryout that you are working. 
We want to try and keep the parents away from the field as far as possible. When you set your fields up, be sure that you are far away from any bleachers or any place where parents have the opportunity to stare and linger. This is supposed to be for the players. We don't want any interruptions where parents can get involved and create a disturbance. Once you get into the evaluation process for the 4v4, the field A evaluator will stay on field A. The field B evaluator will stay on field B. There is no need for these coaches to switch as they are set with their players and must make the best scoring that they possibly can. When coaching the 4v4 evaluations, this is the most important phase of the tryout. Every single player must have their own unique individual rank. There cannot be any two numbers the same. If you have two that are close, give it a 0.5, whatever it takes to differentiate the player. Field A will be ranking their players from 1 through 15. Field A will be 1 through 15. Field B will be 16 through 30. Again, if you are Coach A, it is 1 through 15. Coach B, it is 16 through 30. That's your ranking system. When giving the players their rank, establish who the top, top player is so you can give them the highest score. If you look in this example, this is for the A field. I established that Brooke was my number one best player, and I found out that Lior was my worst player. Once I had those, I was able to then bear down on the ranks of everybody else. If you look at my numbers, you will see that there are no two scores that are the same. With Emma and Leah, I originally gave them a rating of a 3, but realized that Emma was a little bit better, so she got a 3.5, so she could have a different score. In the 4v4 process, you must set up your fields in the first 10 minutes, establishing which players will be on your A field and which players will be on your B field. You have 10 minutes to move players around to set the fields and solidify who is an A player and who is a B player. Once you have that solid, then you can move on to ranking the players and giving them their scores. If you have leftover time, move the players around to any field and allow them to scrimmage and have fun. As an evaluator for this tryout, you are fully expected to understand the procedures in which it takes to successfully run this tryout. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I recommend watching this video a few times to fully feel confident and understand what it takes to run this.